I'm Nicholas Ward, I'm from Cardiff University and I look at something called differential compaction. This is where you have rocks that are buried and they compact at different rates. So if you have one rock compacting at a faster rate than the other, you'll have a topographic expression, you'll have something on the surface like a fold. And this is where we can look for hydrocarbons that accumulate um, and also pump in some carbon dioxide from the atmosphere underground and that's called CCS, Carbon Capture and Storage. I got into my PhD, it was actually quite a lucky process. Um, I, was, I was initially interested in structural geology. I liked the idea that I could see in 3D and I can try imaging these things, but on a really large scale. So rather than going to an outcrop and looking at tiny little things, um, I can imagine what the earth is doing on a crustal scale. So how plates move and how big kilometre scale faults can uh, move the rocks and how rocks can separate and stuff. So that, that really interested me. Um, working, in the, working with uh, seismic data, which is what I use, you're looking at these kilometre scale structures, uh, these folds in the rock, these faults, and it really is massive structures that you could never even imagine that you could just see on a, on, on a computer screen. So that's, that's how I got excited by it and how I got into it really. Seismic data is a type of data that we use in the oil and gas industry. It's, um, it's a reflection of what's underground. So a boat will, uh, will float along the surface of the water. It will send out a sound wave down into the rocks. These rocks will reflect the sound back at different speeds depending on what type of rock it is. And we can image the rock units underground depending on how quickly these sounds come back up to the surface. So we use that to make maps of the under, underground and make maps of the surface. The impact of my work is hopefully going to find new areas where we can search for oil and gas. And these are key areas in uh, Brazil, offshore Brazil, where they don't quite have the um, money and infrastructure to create new, let's say, renewable energy um, developments. So they're looking at growing their economy and the best way for them to do that is exploiting oil and gas. As far as my work in the North Sea goes, which is where I was looking initially, uh, there's a big push to do CCS, this carbon capture and storage that I previously talked about. So these structures that form underground because of differential compaction, they are perfect structures for us to pump oil and gas. So if we have, let, let's pretend it's like a balloon. If we have a balloon and you pump oil and gas into it, or carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, if you have a layer that isn't permeable, so the gas can't flow through it, you'll collect this gas that we're taking from the atmosphere, pumping underground and trying to solve this climate change that we're, we're predicament we're in at the moment. My research is a controversial topic. It's funded by an environmental council and I'm looking into oil and gas reserves and how to exploit them. I, I would agree that we need to fund more into renewable energy technologies and ways of using renewable energy. Um, but places like Brazil, where they've got a growing economy and they depend entirely on some, some things like the oil and gas industry to grow, they need to look for it. And, and other things, it's, it's not a simple transition. We can't, we can't just shut off oil and gas and then use uh, renewable energy. It's not, it's not as simple as that. And one of the things that both people in industry don't understand and also the public, we, we haven't given the awareness that we depend so much on oil and gas. Um, I completely agree that we need to reduce our impact um, on, on the environment. That's part of the reason why I'm trying to focus more on the CCS and trying to push towards looking at where oil and gas could be, which would mean that you could actually house this oil and gas or house carbon dioxide, house fossil fuels, so it's a suitable place to pump carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into the subsurface. But, but we still rely on hydrocarbons um, and we will do for 50 to 100 years. We, we should be changing, I completely agree. But until we've got the funding and the, the cost to be able to cover renewable energy and the ability and efficiency of these technologies, we, we just simply can't move towards it right now.